Alright, as the video implies, this is a bit of a multi-topic video. Um, first up, Fedor retired after beating Pedro Hizo. Or supposedly, there's some rumors that he's not going to retire. We'll see. Hopefully he does, just because clearly, uh, perhaps Fedor, but mostly I think M1, are, are not interested in giving us fights we want to see with Fedor. Um, he's just going to fight these guys who are past their prime or never particularly were and that's all we're going to get from him and I don't mean he should sign with the UFC people think that but there are heavyweight matches outside of the UFC that are, are compelling and could be interesting Fedor Barnett for example could be a good fight um, and I just don't think we're ever going to get them um, onwards to the UFC on FX or Fox FX uh, we had the Maynard Clay Guida fight. I'm going to talk about Clay Guida's game plan, or what appeared to be the game plan, whether it was the game plan or not. I don't know. Um, people have compared it to Frankie Edgar. People have compared it to Carlos Condon, um, at least in his fight with Nick Diaz. I would say that this is not that, because this wasn't fighting. Um, people will say that, you know. I'm talking about Edgar that's not fighting, or Dominic Cruz is not fighting, or Carlos Khan is not fighting. You can be defensive and fight, and you can counter strike and fight, and you can even back up and still fight. Something that people don't seem to particularly get. The problem with Clay Guida's actions is he just backed up. He didn't back up and throw. He didn't counter punch when Maynard came in, because believe me, there were opportunities. Whenever Maynard stuck out the big right hand, he was why open this whole area was open to be <laughs> popped and uh, Guida never threw in that situation he just didn't throw that's the key difference here is he did not at any time land sustained offense past the first two rounds like the first two rounds you watch them and you have a solid game plan, dead is working, and he probably won those rounds because he was throwing more, he was landing more, he was, you know, there was some effective striking there. Rounds three through five, there's literally nothing. That's that's my take on it. People want to, you know, say that that kind of thing ruins the part. I don't think it does because I honestly don't think you'll see that again because it didn't work. Um, basically, through the third through fifth round, you... It was forfeiting aggression, forfeiting octagon control, and the effect of striking was a wash, and there wasn't really any grappling. So, there you go. Um, good job for Maynard um, for trying to make that a fight, and I don't even really like Gray Maynard as a fighter, but there you go. Other than that, the card was pretty nice. Cub Swanson, Ross Pearson, that was a really good fight. Uh, Hatsukiyoki lost, or Carl Lamas. I thought he won, but I'm going to watch the fight again, but it was close enough. I think the first round you probably have to give to Hiyoki. The third round you definitely have to give to Lamas. The second round is really how you see it, and I have a problem with giving it to Lamas. And what most people said is, you know, he had like seven different guillotine attempts, whatever. I don't think it was seven, but whatever. Some absurd number of guillotine uh, offensives. Problem was, despite what Kenny Florian kept saying, none of them were close. Um, he didn't have guard for most of them. And I mean, if you really think back, find me a number of guillotines that were finished without guard. It's, it's not an effective submission attempt, in my opinion, in that position, and I don't score it. Um, otherwise, you know, random attempts at guillotines would win fights for, uh, Carlos Vamola every time out, because he catches you in them repetitively. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I give the second round to Hiyoki. You can give the second round to Lamas, and I'm not really going to argue it. Either, either way, Hatsuyogi, let down fight. Um, people have been saying this is, again, another failure of Japanese MMA. Although, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to two names that keep getting thrown into this. Japanese fighters come over to the States, and they get embarrassed. Theme, which is, people are throwing Kazu Masaki's name in there. He's undefeated in the States, people. He won his only fight against Paul Daly and he's like past his prime like people 
And then people want to throw in people who just really aren't legends, like we didn't. Oh, Ryo Chonin was a failure. Well, Ryo Chonin was really a journeyman in Japan. Michihiro Magawa, journeyman in Japan, signed with the UFC with a 4-3 and three record, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, I think people just, people seem to just mistake every Japanese fighter as some Japanese legend that, you know, is amazing. And no, no, it's not. UFC likes to hype it up as such. Like, I do remember the Wyman Omigawa fight where they just trying to hype up Omigawa as this great. Um, hope for Japanese MMA. I'm going, what are you talking about? He's barely over 500. Um, anyways, that's my, I don't know, defense of Japanese MMA. The other one that's getting thrown out there a lot is Kawajiri. And I'm like, he lost once to a guy who people were trying to make a case for was the best fighter in the world at the weight class. You want to think about that for a moment. <laughs> anyways, onwards to the Vandalay for Trinkin card. Um, it was pretty good, but I think it, in the end that it was a pay-per-view, it failed. I imagine the buys were not great. I was in a bar watching it, and the bar was deserted. And this is a bar that is normally jam-packed for any other UFC card I've ever gone to see there. Um, I don't think people were really interested in it. I think it was, it was a, it was basically an Ultimate Fighter finale, um, with uh, basically Fabricio Verdum on it as a kind of a big name and the coach fight. Which turned into Rich Franklin and Vanderlei Silva. I mean, it was a good card. Seriously, the main card was great. Yuri Alcantara, Hakeem Diaz, hell of a debut for Hakeem Diaz. Um, makes you makes you tough pause and think: Is Yuri Alcantara that good, or is Hakeem Diaz just that good? I'm leaning more towards the latter, just because we have seen Alcantara go out there and basically bitch slap Ricardo Lamas. He had one of the more. Uh, let me pull this back. I think he had. I believe he fought. Homie Gawa and had one of the better showings against him as well. Uh, Yuri Alcantara. Yeah, he had a pretty good outing against Michihiro Magawa. He beat Felipe Arantes, which is not a bad fight. He's got a submission over Francisco Ronaldo, who came out here and basically beast boated uh, Delson Helena. Another good fight. Um, I think he's a good fighter. I think he's maybe not as good as we thought he was. But I think that this is really more that Hey Diaz is a lot more quality than people are aware of. Other than that, we had Verdun destroy Mike Russo. We didn't see that coming. Uh, congratulations to Ronnie Mariano Bezeja. I noticed they did the Ronnie Jason thing. Um, whatever. Um, he wins the Ultimate Fighter, gets the contract, probably will move down to Bantamweight. He's been talking about that for some time. I think his last fight before the Ultimate Fighter was also at Bantamweight. Um, and also the winner was uh, Cesar Ferreira over uh, Sergio Marias, although he'll probably, I think, have to fight Daniel Serafin to really properly wear the crown. Um, thanks to Rich Franklin for winning me a Jaeger bomb at the bar, because someone bet me that he would not be Vanderlei Silva. Anyways, uh, as for that fight, first round, close fight. Um, I think the judges gave it to Franklin. I definitely don't have a problem with that. Um, but you could make an argument for Vanderlei. Second round, definitely Vanderlei has nearly finished it. Very, very close. Good work by the referee, Mario Yamasaki. Not normally a fan of Mario. But Rich was intelligently defending himself, moving at all times, doing his thing. Third round, fourth round, fifth round, kind of boring. Um, Rich taking over because Vanderlei. I just think blew his gas in the second round. Anyways, Rich gets the win. Vanderlei, I don't know. Consider retiring. Um, the chin is not great. Did hold up for 25 minutes this fight, though. Um, uh, right until basically the end. But um, it, it's like anything you you don't want to see. Your leg, you don't want to see. It's kind of like the Fedor thing. I mean, can they still fight? Yeah, they can still fight. They can still win. They can't compete at the level that they used to. That's just all I would say. Anyways, enjoy the video. And for those of you in the Simulated Fight League, best of luck in Season 4.